Let's turn our hymnals to 187. 187. Amazing grace. How appropriate. <laughs> this doesn't warm our hearts nothing but amazing grace. Love lifted me, love. 
saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's a master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Good help. stage because he's having trouble with his hip. And I said we'll call him hippie. I did speak with Tom. You can come down just a little more. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect. I did speak to Tom. He said that uh, Marilyn was going to go see another doctor. Um, she's had swollen wrists too. And the other doctor said he didn't see any, so she's going to go check that out and see if perhaps something got messed up in her wrist, too. Asked where this all happened, she fell at her daughter's house. Uh, fell down the stairs, at the end of the stairs, and fell on her back. And that's where that all happened and how that happened. So, uh, yeah, she's uh, been quite a bit miserable, so keep her definitely in your prayers. Well, I was preparing to have a, a short message because we were going to have the kiddos have a program and uh, when that came across that that wasn't going to happen, I all of a sudden said, what am I going to do? Am I going to give that message? or come up with something else. Well, the Lord uh, led me to something else. It's along the same lines, but uh, I, I'm not going to go into Philemon this morning. I would ask you to open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 3. And let's stand and read it in unison this morning. 1 John 3, 1 through 3. Not as many people will turn the pages, so it's not going to take as long. I think everybody's pretty much close. Uh, reading together. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Father, thank you for the precious truths revealed in your word. We pray that you'll give us the faith to trust the things that you've revealed there. And we pray that as we look at your word today, it would direct us in our understanding of who you are and how we relate to you or can relate to you. And Father, I pray that your spirit would just do a mighty work in each and every heart 
to know more of the love of God and to appreciate that all the more, to appreciate our God all the more. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this is Valentine's Day. It was February 12th that I proposed to my wife. Not this year. She wasn't sure I was serious. I'm not a, a real good romantic. And the way it came across, she wasn't sure if I really meant it. But on the 14th, she received from me a big bouquet of roses. Then she knew I was serious. And she said yes. We use Valentine's Day to express our love to someone we love by giving them something special or doing something special for them. And uh, I suppose some of you have done something like that to someone you love. Of course, we, we also use Valentine's Day as the kids to share candy and, and friendship, not in the same sense that I shared my love to my love. But uh, if, if you have somebody that you really love, normally Valentine's Day is that one special day to remind you to somehow express it, right? And to pour out your love on them in a special way. And uh, last year I knew this was probably going to be the last, that was going to be the last Valentine's Day I could share with Rosalie, so I went overboard because I wanted her to know how much I loved her. Now my son, Paul, has always been competitive and he always wanted to outdo his daddy. And quite frequently as I would get something for Rosalie on her birthday or Valentine's Day or something else, especially as uh, you get it from a high V store here in town, he's got connections with those who run the flower shop there. And he would always outdo dad and son. But this time, they were really good to me and he came into there and said whatever my dad has chosen i'll give you i can't remember if it's 50 bucks more or 20 bucks more well they didn't let him know how much i spent <laughs> that time i beat him <laughs> God bestowed his love on us by giving us his son to make us his own. The passage before it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. The sense is how astounding, how amazing the love that God poured out upon us. As you stop and think of who we are, who we were, sinners, we're told that uh, we were at enmity with God. And if you're still in your sin and unsaved, you're still at enmity with God. You're his enemy. You're opposed to him. We weren't seeking for God. We wouldn't seek for God in and of ourselves. And yet God loves us in such an amazing way that he not only showed his love, there's another passage in Romans that says that God demonstrated really his word, his love toward us. In that while we were at sinners, Christ died for us. But here he's saying he not only showed it, he actually gave us, he poured out his love, he bestowed it upon us in such a marvelous way that we should be called the children of God. 
You should accept the love of God in Jesus Christ and respond in love and gratitude. And we're going to look at a couple of reasons why as we look at this small passage. And the first reason we find in these first two verses, the first verse in the beginning of verse 2, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world doesn't recognize us, or the world doesn't acknowledge us, because it wouldn't acknowledge him either. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? Notice here that God accepts you in the present as his child once you respond in faith in his son. Now what are we talking about responding in faith in his son? Well, the love was bestowed in his son and through his son. He sent Jesus to die in the sinner's place, take God's wrath for sin upon himself in our place, that if we would put our faith, our total dependence in him and what he did, we would have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and become children of God. If you don't respond in faith in Jesus and what he's done, then you cannot be his child. So that's why I say once you respond in faith in his son, God accepts you in the present. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now, once you have believed, God's love bestowed makes you a part of God's family through salvation. If you believed in Jesus, as your Savior, you are now, in this very present moment, his child, his son. Now, how does that happen? Well, it comes through the new birth. And we're told that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we're born again. We have a spiritual birth. Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you're uh, familiar with that passage. He came to Jesus and had some questions, and Jesus knew what his real need was and what was begging his heart, and he, he wanted to know how he could enter up in God's kingdom. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this puzzled Nicodemus, and he says, Don't be puzzled about this. Uh, why do you marvel at this thought that you must be born again? That which is born of the flesh, the physical, is physical, is fleshly. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You need a spiritual birth. You need to be born again. Now, 1 Peter 1.23 also talks about this uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed and by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever is the rest of that verse see uh, we we hear a lot and even the commentators use a lot the word I'm adopted into God's family well there there is a truth there but adoption and birth are not one and the same. They are connected in uh, salvation in a way, but they are not the same. In order to be a part of God's family, you need to be born into his family. You need the rebirth. Unless a man is born again, unless a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need a spiritual birth. And that happens when you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what that does, it makes you a part of God's family. You're born into his family. John 1, 12 says it this way. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power or the right to become the sons or the children of God. 
even to them that believe on his name. Notice there are two words that are practically synonymous there, or used in a synonymous way. Receive and believe. When you receive Jesus and what he's done for you as your Savior, as your salvation, when you believe, when you put your faith in him, then you become a son of God. God's love bestowed makes you a part of God's family through salvation. Now that's amazing. Behold what manner of love that God has bestowed upon us. I, I know that you think you're all that good and better, but the reality is all of us are terrible sinners in and of ourselves. And if we saw ourselves in our simple state as God saw us, you would not think that you're all that good and better. You would see yourself as somebody who really does not deserve, does not merit to even be considered by God, much less to be loved by Him. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. God's love bestowed gives you the privileges of God's sons in salvation. Now this is the idea of adoption. I would take you to Galatians chapter 4 for just a few moments in verses 1 through 7. You can uh, hold your place back there, but uh, Galatians 4, 1 through 7 talks about the adoption. Now, now he uses this uh, portion to speak to the Jewish people who are still relying upon the law and not relying upon the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And they understood this because this is their culture of their time. They had this idea of adoptions of sons that we're going to look at. Now I say that the heir, now an heir is one who has been given an inheritance or a birthright. As long as he is a child, now the word child there is the idea of infant, but can go beyond infancy to just somebody who is still immature, hasn't reached the age of maturity. As long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Now, he, he differs in some aspects, but when it comes to this heir, this birthright, he doesn't differ, even though he is the owner of all that has been given to him. He is not the possessor of it yet, and he is not the controller of it yet. Just like a servant in the household does not have freedom to do uh, whatever he wants with those things, the child doesn't either. But he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. There is an appointed time, and that, that a time was considered the time of accountability and maturity. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now, what this adoption of sons was, when they reached that age of, account of maturity, they were considered no longer a child, but a full son with full privileges. And they had control and possession of their birthright or their inheritance. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Wherefore thou art no more a servant. One of these like a child who just is on the same function as a servant. Although they are a child, they, they function as a servant. You're no more in that but a son. You have the full privileges of sonship. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. What that means is, is that God be Love, the God's love bestowed gives you all the privileges that a full mature son of God has in salvation. What an amazing love that God has bestowed upon us. 
This means that as God's child through faith, you have all the resources of God's grace at your disposal as your birthright in his family. <coughs> all the resources of God's grace are at your disposal as part of his family. And God is delighted when you use them for his glory and do not abuse them. So what you should do is discover and access more and more the resources of his grace. Now, some aspects of his grace I just mentioned here, and, uh, and you can think of some more, but one of the aspects of his grace is his presence. The Lord Jesus said that uh, he would never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord has said that in his word. And knowing that he is present gives encouragement, it gives strength, gives motivation, gives peace. So his presence is part of the resources of his grace. And he wants you to draw near to him, and he'll draw near to you. His power, his grace, a lot of his grace in our life has to do with his power. To function, to, to be what he wants us to be, and to do what he wants us to do. We need his power in and of ourselves. We are totally inadequate. Another aspect is his promises. All those promises that apply to you in God's word, you have access, you have disposal to those promises as his child. Now, I know there's a song that's been written, every promise in the book is mine. Uh, I get the sentiment that that's not true. There were some promises that were given to the nation of Israel that don't belong to me. There are some promises that belong to the unbelievers that don't belong to me. Hallelujah. God changed my heart and saved my soul. But there are many promises that belong specifically to the children of God. And every one of them you have at your disposal as a child of God. His peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Oh, I tell you, there's a lot of people in this world looking for peace. And we have access to that. It's at our disposal as God's children. His provision. I had a devotion this morning about God meeting us uh, by giving us our daily bread. Isn't that enough? Uh, I had to thank the Lord today. He's given me more than just the daily at this point in my life. There have been times where I wondered day by day. But uh, God meets our every need. Not necessarily our every want. But our every need. And we can go to him and, and plead for his provision and his protection. All of these, and probably more that you can think of, are resources of God's grace and they're all at your disposal if you're a child of God. He wants you to use them in humility and in faith. The second reason you should accept the love of God in Jesus Christ and respond in love and gratitude is because God assures you of his presence as his child once you respond in faith in his son. We talked about we are already the children of God. We already have all the privileges as a son of God when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. But there is a future to look forward to, a hope. 
A confident expectation as a son, as a child of God. Notice in verse 2 here, I'm going to get back to the page. Uh, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. It has not been fully revealed what it will be like in the future when we are in the presence of the Lord. And God, uh, for various reasons probably, has not revealed that to us. Number one, we probably couldn't comprehend it all anyway. Just even thinking about what I do know from the scriptures boggles my mind. I have been thanking the Lord every day for my loved ones who have died and gone into the presence of the Lord because they're sinless. They're at peace. They're in the very presence of God Himself. I can't begin to even imagine how amazing that is. <laughs> makes me long to be there. But we know that when He shall appear, Jesus Christ shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Now don't misunderstand, it's not saying that we'll be made gods in essence. Uh, we're not going to be in uh, place of God in the Trinity, each one having all the features and nature of God in that sense. But we are going to be on a spiritual plane where we can fellowship face to face for the rest of eternity in the presence of God. You see, God will make all his children fully holy and honored in his presence at Jesus' appearance. That's why I said that I can't imagine what it's going to be like to be sinless. And there's going to be such a celebration, but uh, we'll be exalted, not in the same sense that God is glorified, but we'll be exalted. We'll have a glorified state. The Lord says He humbles those who are proud and He exalts those who are humble. Well, he's going to exalt us all in glory when we're in the presence of Jesus. And God will take all his children finally home and happy in his presence at Jesus' appearance. We shall be like him for we shall see him because we're going to be in his presence as he is. I've caught myself using this term a lot lately and uh, I've heard others say it because it's true. This world is not my home. I'm just traveling through. I say I, I'm ready to go home. I'm looking for a city whose builder, foundations builder is the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's home. We're just strangers here. We're travelers in this world. And someday we're going to be at home with the Lord, those of us who put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's going to be a total happiness, a total rejoicing. There will be no sadness there, no sorrow. No regrets. Now, verse 3 does tell us this. It says, And every man that hath this hope, this confident expectation in him, purifieth himself, even as he, the Lord, is pure. You go back to chapter 2 verse 29, he's talking about this righteousness, and this is in the middle of this. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. When my wife and I knew we were going to move, 
we started doing something. We started going through all our stuff and getting rid of the garbage we knew we shouldn't bring along. Accidentally, she got rid of some things that I wouldn't have considered garbage too, like a bunch of our pictures, but that's all right. It, we were getting rid of garbage because it wasn't wanted. And it surely it wasn't needed. I told her, I said, really, and we never fulfilled this because it's no fun. I said, every five years we ought to pretend like we're moving just so we get rid of all of our garbage. <laughs> Any amens out there? How many of you are going to go and start going through your garbage? It really isn't any fun, is it? But it's not wanted, really, and it's surely not needed, right? Well, we did this in preparation because we were going to have a new home. The Lord says in our lives, we're going to have a new home. And we really ought to be preparing now and getting rid of the spiritual garbage that's in our lives because we're going to be in a place of absolute holiness and the garbage surely isn't needed and it isn't wanted. Now God in His grace if you'll put your faith in him, will help you to get rid of the garbage. But you're going to have to humbly admit that there's some garbage there that needs to be gotten rid of. And ask him to help you. As a child of God anticipating in his presence, keep your spiritual house free from impurities, and holiness which is not fitting for where you will someday be for the rest of eternity. Live like a child of God in this world below. How do you know when you're living like a child of God? Well, uh, or how to live like a child of God? Well, let me put it this way. If you're not living like a child of God, you will usually know. Unless you're totally ignorant. Hey, just think of it. As you go through life, you know when you're fouling up. You know when things aren't right. Especially in a relationship. If you have a good, close relationship and you're in fellowship with one another, and when something's not right, you sense it. You know it's wrong. I discovered that with my wife. The, the longer we lived together and the more we got to know each other and the closer a fellowship that we had, if something was wrong, usually she didn't even have to tell me. I just knew. I couldn't always put my finger on exactly what it was, but I knew something wasn't right. And many times I could put my finger exactly on what it was. And I tell you what, the closer you walk with the Lord and the longer you walk with the Lord, if you're not living like a child of God, you're usually just going to know. If you're spending time in God's Word and prayer and and faithful attendance and service for the Lord and just day by day and, uh, communication and fellowship with the Lord. If you're not living like a child of God, you're going to know. And that's when you need to get things squared away in preparation for eternity. The love of God bestowed on those who believe in the Son for salvation is totally astounding. Your love and appreciation should be nothing less than overflowing. Show him your deepest affection and admiration 
as his blood bought child. And if you have not yet received his love and become his child, don't reject him any longer. Turn from your sin and put your full trust in all that he's done for you to save you from your sin. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for your astounding love poured out upon us. Pray that if there's a soul yet that needs the Lord Jesus as their Savior, that this day you would give them the faith to just trust in Jesus completely for all he's done on their behalf. Father, for those of us who believe, help us to pure our, purify ourselves even as you are pure. And prepare us for the time we'll be in your presence. And while we're living here, help us as your children to access all of the resources of grace to make us what you want us to be and to help us do what you want us to do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, number 666. 666. My Jesus, I love you. Let's stand together if we sing. If you need somebody to speak to about a spiritual matter, we're here for you. You can come as we sing. Or come and say, I'd like to talk to you or someone about the spiritual need. My Jesus, I